Hi, everyone. Um, thank you very much for being here. My name is Luisa. Um, I work at Accessing for Europe, which is an NGO dedicated to promoting and defending uh, the right of access to information in Europe. And today I'm going to talk about how a crowdsourced freedom of information campaign um, improved transparency in the European Union. Um, it all started here. For those of you who are not familiar with these faces, these are the European commissioners. Um, they're sort of the ministers of the European Union. Um, there's 28 of them, one for each of the EU member states, one for each area of work of the European Union. And in 2014, as part of the work Access Info was doing um, on transparency of public spending, we realized that um, the public could not know how much were they spending when they travel. And we thought that this information was important because we're talking about public funds uh, being spent by high-level public officials in the exercise of their public functions. So transparency for us was essential first for accountability, but also to be able to monitor and um, to scrutinize um, how the EU is spending its money. So um, at Access Info, we set out on a mission to make uh, the EU commissioners' travel expenses transparent. Um, now, I realize that the title of this presentation is sort of a spoiler alert, meaning that, yes, we managed to achieve uh, transparency and that, yes, uh, the key to this achievement was a crowdsourced freedom of information campaign. Um, but what I'm going to talk about today is first how we got there, so how we built on this uh, campaign. I'm going to talk about the campaign itself and about what happened next. So um, when we first realized at Access Info that uh, the travel expenses of the commissioners were not available, our first instinct, of course, was to ask for them, to request them. Uh, we went to osteu.org, which is an online portal to submit freedom of information requests to EU institutions. Um, it uses the Alavatelli software created by my society, and the portal is run by, uh, by Access Info and by my society. Um, so in May 2014, we submitted the first freedom of information request asking for the expenses of uh, EU commissioners. And we got this, which is the total amount uh, for each of the years for 2012 and 13 for all the commissioners. Now for us, this didn't really work because it's not a level of detail enough that would allow true scrutiny and true accountability. So in 2015, um, in October, we decided to ask again, making it clear that we were interested in the mission expenses uh, for each of the commissioners for each of their missions. And we got this, which again um, is the total per year, although this time it is breaking down uh, for each of the commissioners, but still this wasn't allowing uh, true scrutiny because the numbers were too large. Um, so we tried a third time making it really, really clear that we wanted the information per mission, per commissioner. And this time we got this, which is the mission expenses that commissioners have to hand in when they, once they are done with their mission, stating how much they spent. But if we look closely, we will realize that the key information um, that we're looking for, which is the name of the commissioner, the dates in which they're traveling, and the places to which they were traveling to, are blanked out. Um, and this definitely didn't look like accountability to us, nor scrutiny, nor anything. Um, so we gave it a thought at Access Info, and we said, okay, well, if they're going to blank out the names, and we really want to know who's spending how much money, um, what we can do is to spread out requests among team members each one of them tackling a specific commissioner. And that way, if they blank out the name, at least we will know who the, the mission expense corresponds to. And I think the commission knew um, or figured out the game we were playing at and finally released the information. So everything that was previously blanked out was now available, meaning that we could now know which commissioner was traveling where, um, in which dates, and spending how much. And of course, we were thrilled to get this uh, documents release that had took us three years of work. Um, and we were so happy that we thought, well, if we have managed to achieve transparency for a certain amount of missions, why not take it to another level and try to get transparency for a whole year of missions for all commissioners? And we thought we would do it via a freedom of information request campaign. 
Um, I'd like to explain a bit of what is actually a Freedom of Information request campaign. The idea was born in Germany um, by our friends at the Open Knowledge uh, Foundation Germany. They thought of this system where they would make it really, really easy for people to file requests and therefore encourage them to file them massively to put pressure on the government or the institution to open up. Um, so they made this campaign where they would ask um, the German parliament, the Bundestag, um, for their scientific reports. They made, created a system where people could file requests in one click. They invited everyone to file a lot of requests. And through the system, they managed to achieve disclosure of thousands of scientific reports the parliament was holding. Um, so we thought this was a great idea. And also, it fit quite well into the uh, situation we were in at the start of 2016, which was that first we had achieved the precedent of disclosure. So we had once uh, gained access to the uh, mission expenses. And second, that what had really worked for us was teamwork. Uh, so fragmenting uh, the, into various requests, the whole of the information we were interested in. So we thought we would create a freedom of information request campaign um, to obtain uh, the mission expenses for all 28 commissioners for the whole of 2016. So we set out to work. Um, the first step was to write the requests. We did so using the Alavetelli pre-written request feature, which allows you to write a request in a single link. And so once you click on that link, which contains the request, it will take you to uh, the request in OSDAU already written, ready to file. Um, the way we thought we would organize the campaign was to break 2016 into two months period. So January, February 2016, March, April, and per commissioner. So the way we would organize um, the requests would be like this. This is the actual Excel table that we use with the period that um, could be requestable and with a list of the 28 commissioners and each of those would be the pre-written request in a single link. Um, the second step was of course to create a website from which the, per, uh, the public could take part in the campaign and could file the requests. Uh, we thought of making it as simple as possible. So we would have a little introduction explaining uh, the details of the campaign and then five easy steps in which you could take part in the campaign and file a request. And then we replicated the table that we saw before um, with a list of all commissioners with um, little photographs and then all the periods that could be requested and each of those buttons that say request would take you to the pre-written request that we formulated easy, um, earlier um, straight to us the EU so that each, could, each request and each time period could be filed. Um, the third step was, of course, to acknowledge our limitations because, sadly, um, technology could not do absolutely everything for us. Um, and the first obstacle that we became aware of is that we would, uh, I mean, the request feature wouldn't uh, stop people from filing the same request twice. And we wanted to avoid duplications. Um, so the system that we thought of is that we would have, during the campaign, one member of the team uh, monitoring all requests that were going to be filed during the campaign, and that person would do so from inside of the Elevateli system using the listing of FOI requests. So every time someone submitted a request, it would appear there. Um, then we use the most analogical way possible, which is uh, to duplicate the table in the website in a whiteboard and uh, with the same kind of structure. So every time the person monitoring the listing of FOI requests saw that a request had been filed, that person would make a check in the whiteboard. And in the meantime, a second person was editing live the website. So when the person at the website saw that a request had been filed, um, they would look inside the HTML for that request, they would take out the link, and they would substitute the request button by requested, so that the next person going into the campaign page would show that that request had been filed already, and they would have to file a whole different request. Um, then we also prepared to spread the word, because of course this was to be a very public campaign, so we created a whole lot of communications materials, of graphics, 
of visualizations of GIFs that would invite people to participate. So for example, we made uh, this little GIF of uh, the president of the commission traveling around in his red yet. Um, so that you would see it on Twitter and you would like to know how much did he spend on his little travel. And uh, finally, we thought of a very clear demand that would be at the core of our message. Um, so we had clear that transparency was key to accountability and that it was key to enable monitor monitoring of public spending. Um, so our ultimate, ultimate goal and what we, th we thought that should happen was that the Commission should have this data proactively published so that um, true monitoring and scrutiny of public spending would be possible. So after all these preparations that took in total two months of work, um, we, were, we were ready to go and on uh, the 26th of January of 2017 we launched the campaign inviting everyone we knew um, inviting friends, family members, people who had never filed a freedom of information request before, um, academics, journalists, activists, everyone, um, to file a request and to help us uh, make EU commissioners' travel expenses transparent. Now it took a total of 48 hours to get all requests filed. Um, so it took uh, 120 citizens from around the European Union to file 168 requests in a little less than two days. Um, now, as some of you might already imagine, the European Commission did not take all that well our campaign. Um, they were not happy um, and they refused to register and process all of the requests that had been filed um, it, and by doing so, they violated EU transparency rules, which obliged them to process all these requests. Um, their main argument was that going through all these requests and answering them all uh, would take first too much time, and second, um, a disproportionate amount of effort, which of course we thought was not a legitimate argument. Um, and of course, our answer was, well, instead of um, going one by one, why don't you just publish the data proactively in bulk? but they didn't want to do it. Um, so in our response to this reaction, we went collective again. Uh, we invited all the uh, requesters that had taken part in the campaign to submit with us a complaint to the European Ombudsman um, about the Commission's reaction to our campaign and the Commission's violations of the e-transparency rule. So in the summer of 2017, Access Info and uh, more than 50 other requesters that had taken part in the campaign uh, presented this complaint. Now the Commission, um, in response to this, came up with what they called a unilateral fair solution, uh, which would be they wouldn't, still they wouldn't um, process all the requests, but what they offered to do was to disclose a selected time period of all the 2016 requests um, as a period that they would decide on. Of course, we didn't think this was a fair solution. We didn't think this was a solution at all. We wanted all requests processed, but they went ahead anyway and um, they disclosed the travel expenses for January and February of 2016 uh, for all the commissioners. Now, um, we were not happy with this solution, but then we thought, okay, well, now that we have a teeny tiny bit of the information requested, why don't we take this opportunity to make a point on why it's really important to have this information transparent and how it helps uh, for accountability and to scrutinize spending of public funds. So we took uh, these two months worth of expenses and we started working with an investigative journalist at news outlet NAC, which is based in Belgium. And um, this investigative journalist did a wonderful job of data crunching. And in August 2018, he published his investigation on how the EU spends uh, funds in travel, about the types of mission, the type of spending, and about the campaign itself. And I guess that it wasn't only us and NAC seeing the public interest in having this data transparent, because in a matter of 48 hours since NAC published this article, this story was replicated and made the headlines of more than 20 media outlets all around Europe, um, which forced also the Commission to um, answer some uncomfortable questions in press briefing about not only how the EU was spending its money, but also why they were trying so hard to keep the rest of the expenses secret. And um, I guess the media pressure really got to them because in September of 2017, 
the European Commission announced that as part of the reforms they were doing to their code of, code of conduct, um, they would include the obligation um, to make transparent, uh, whoop, sorry. <laughs> Oi, almost. There we go. Um, they would include, uh, for the sake of accountability and for the sake of transparency, the obligation to start proactively publishing the travel expenses of all commissioners and update them every two months. Um, this change became effective in February 2018 and from now on you can find in the European Commission's website um, the information about uh, for each of the commissioners about uh, their emissions and how much they spent on travel accommodation, daily allowances, miscellaneous costs and even a bit of context on why they were in such mission, maybe some links to press coverage and PRs published by the Commission, etc. Um, of course, the system is not perfect, it can't always be, and one of the problems is that this information is a bit difficult to find inside the website of the Commission, but please don't worry about it, because at Access Info we produced a GIF that guides you through the European Commission website until you find uh, where the travel expenses are hidden. Um, so this was a very exciting campaign for Access Info. Um, we had great fun. It was also a lot of work. We had never done this kind of campaign before, and we learned a lot. And there are four key lessons that we would like to share to you to, that we would like to share with you today. Um, in case you would like to do a campaign like this or to um, adapt it somehow. And the first lesson would be to prepare and prepare and prepare. Um, as I said previously, it took us um, two months worth of preparation for a campaign that would last 48 hours. Um, you will need to test everything, to try to anticipate everything, to try to uh, figure out what will the technical limitations would be. And the more you prepare, the smoother it will run once you launch the campaign. Um, the second one would be to have a clear demand um, that keeps you going and that guides your campaign. Um, just something that sums up what you're doing, why it's important, and uh, what do you actually want to achieve so that you can build a solid narrative. Um, the third recommendation would be to work collectively, to try to bring in as many people as you can from the most diverse backgrounds as possible. Um, bring in people from academia, bring in people uh, from journalism, people who have never worked with you before. Also because if we're working on behalf of the public interest, um, having the public as the core of our work uh, makes our demands stronger and legitimizes our work. And uh, fourth, but not least, um, be ready to think laterally, because unfortunately, um, things will not always go as planned. You might face uh, technical difficulties. You might, may uh, find um, nasty reactions from institutions. Um, and not everything can be solved via the campaign itself. So be ready to explore other campaigning uh, techniques, such as litigation, such as working with the media, such as collecting uh, signatures anything that will keep your campaign going um, until you achieve what you were set to achieve. And that's about it. Thank you very much for your attention.